but of Akita, you kind of know roughly where they are. So they must be really easy to track if, you yeah. know, if you know exactly where they are, they're in this mm -hmm. tiny little spot. Like, how easy are they to spot? Right. So when, when you're looking at the global map, yes, the, when you're looking at the global map of the world, where the vaquita exist is a pinprick. It is the upper, the northern end of the Gulf of California. So between mainland Mexico and Baja California, um, where the Colorado River estuary, which once was much greater than it is now, but, but where the estuary is and then to the further south. So at one point, the range was estimated to be about 4,000 square kilometers. Wow. But the most small. recent, it, it, yes. So when you're in your out there in a boat and you're looking for an animal that's about five feet long, um, and there's not very many of them, it suddenly seems like the range is expansive. But compared to other species, and particularly marine mammals, it's a very small range. The range, yeah. however, has, we believe, is getting even smaller, though. And the most recent estimate is about uh, an area that's about 12 by 24 kilometers. That's so small. It's so small, and there's so very few creatures, or marine vaquita still in there. You said, um, sorry, did we say yep. what the rough estimate was now? Yes, um, uh, about tw 20 or 20. less than 20. And of course, it's very difficult, especially when we're talking about animals that are becoming increasingly rare, to, to provide a precise number. Uh, yeah. And typically in animal populations, we don't provide precise numbers because there's always a, a little bit of uh, a margin of error. Right. Um, so the estimate right now, the one that's being used, is, is less than 20. That's the best scientific evidence. And that's based not just on the visual sightings, but there is an acoustic array out because porpoises in general are very difficult to sight. It's because of their fins are very small. Okay, so when they come up basically to breed is pretty much the only time you're really gonna visually see them. Exactly, and one of the characteristic of porpoises is they, they really don't display at the surface. They're not like a dolphin that will come and bow ride with you, with the exception of the doll's porpoise, which will. <laughs> um, they don't generally leap out of the water. Uh, they are a subsurface creature, with the exception, like you said, of to come up to breathe. They're a non-demonstrative type of creature. They, they they typically don't draw attention to themselves. And right. so as a porpoise researcher, you get very good at uh, looking for those cryptic clues that will suggest that the animals are there. Okay. Um, and, and that's what I watch for when I'm working with porpoises. It's, um, it does, it is incredibly difficult, even in a small area, when you're searching for one of the rarest animals on the planet. Um, and, and we were so fortunate in 2017. I think it was our very first day of survey. We got wonderful sea conditions and there they were. 